spoke to you probably was like three years ago is that you were in some way questioning remaining in a past. I don't know if you're like SSB, if you're about Chuva or something. You were a, a breast lover husband, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, now my friend tells me that he's reconsidered it. This is like a unicorn event. In the way I think, it's like a Christian becoming Catholic. It's like a straight guy becoming gay. It typically doesn't, <laughs> doesn't cross over. But you're someone who became a rationalist for a bit, and now you went back. Well, I, I didn't. I didn't fully take the full uh, leap, but I was. Uh, I was uh, dabbling in it for sure. Uh huh. This is clearly not a debate, but I want to educate my audience, and I just want to know what encouraged you to go back. So, I had a little strife uh, for a little bit to some of the. Did not. I wasn't like super close, but I had a little connection to Barhaim's uh, Shira and whatever, and uh, some of his Kevra. And uh it wasn't like a deep connection. I knew a few people. I was looking into things. And uh um, uh, like uh, the first thing that was kind of a turnoff in the rationalist world, I just kind of found it all a little bit dry. I completely agree yeah. with you. I mean, it's typically yeah. dry and it's very elitist. That means if you don't have things very, very this and that, yeah, they correct you and they're – all right, but continue. Anyways, um, so, yeah, some of the, the dry elitist stuff was – uh was a little like uh I don't know if concerning is the word but it definitely was not my uh cup of tea. And uh hit there I uh it's funny what brought me back to more like of a – you wanna put like a like a Hasidish uh you wanna know, put a Kabbalistic uh you wanna know say was uh I started learning uh Hasidic Chabad a lot. And uh and uh, that was kind of like for me that kind of uh reconnected me uh to that kind of there if you want to put it that way and uh you're not the only person that has done it like this i mean I'm, for some reason i thought that you in some way detached yourself from any you know from anything you learned of how judaism functions and this and that but i've met people who could embrace everything I teach or hashkafically what I teach as, yes, that's right, yes, this and that, but I still want to remain a stop or a chassid or, a, you know, part of bubba or whatever. Right. I mentioned last time in a video that I kind of like Mishachistim. They're so right, happy yeah. and purposeful, and it's just a different lens of viewing Yiddishkeit. I'm pretty sure in the vast majority of yeshivas of, like, uh, well, Hasidic yeshivas, the guys know that Kabbalah is not really halacha, but it's, sure. it's, it makes Judaism more palatable because if you're only just the bottom line, like what's the final halacha, this and that, I mean, life doesn't function like that. It's kind of like, like having a yeah, wife that to... you just, like you only give your wife what you're obligated to give her. Don't caress her and don't hug her and tell her nice things. So I guess, right. yeah, go ahead. No, I was going to say that I, I think a, a person needs a little bit of like, not just chizuk, but needs a little bit of, like, you know, for lack of a better term, ruchness in his life. He needs a little bit of, like, feeling of devakis and closeness to Hashem that I think the rationalist world could learn a lot more from, like, the chassidim and from people who are more mystically inclined is, like, the Indian of just, like, flat-out devakis having, like, a, a kesher to the abister, a kesher to, the, to, to Hashem that, uh, that I felt like that's, like, I felt like in, like, some rational circles they kind of, like, make fun of that. You know, like, make fun of someone, like, feeling close to Hashem, feeling like, uh, or not just feeling close to Hashem, just, like, someone, like, having, like, a bishmak, so to speak, having, like, a delight in, and uh, pleasure in their Yiddish guys. First off, this is why I've become more tolerant with even Messianics, right? Because there's some Messianics that this uh-huh. is how they communicate with God, even though it's man-made. I mean, as long as you acknowledge that a lot of these Kabbalistic ideas are kind of devotional attempts from rabbis to make everything sweeter, but they're not necessarily convinced that it's absolutely correct. Every attempt, every even the Tanya, I think someone could appreciate the Tanya and still feel that it's just opinion, right? I mean, it's just as, as divinely inspired as if you wrote something, right? I mean, perhaps this person is a little more connected to God, uh, but it's not like it's all divinely inspired. I mean, that's one issue that it's a cat that I can't put back in the bag. 
that this is still opinion, and halacha is really what's unmovable. But I, I definitely agree with you on the sense that the thing that I think I heard you say that the thing that unites Klal Yisrael is the idea of keeping Torah Shabbat Torah Shabbat Peh Shabbat right? Shabbat that that's the main Indian, right? The main Indian is that is the being, you know, Shamari Mitzvahs. Um, but, uh, to, uh, that, that I think that, that I can be masking to, that I think I can agree with. But, uh, to say that, uh, like, the, the Balatani writing something is, like, just like an ordinary guy, that's where, that's where we might find a disagreement, but I, I don't think it's a, I don't think it's necessarily an issue to believe that there are special people in the world that have special crisis, what do you want to say, special, uh, you know, connections to Hashem that other people don't have, and still... Sure, they're called prophets. The, the prophethood is the only office that the Torah endorses that could exist among men to give us God's will, as limited as it could be from the mouth of a prophet in terms of what's going to come or, you know, what we could prevent by doing tshuva and stuff like that. But the Torah has that role. But outside of that, I don't think it has the office of just people who can speak for God or give us further insight from an authoritative perspective. It seems like it's all opinion, but, I mean, some things are truer than others, right? No, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying that you can have opinions that you're – like, there's a difference between, like, an opinion of someone you trust and someone that you, like, you just met, you know what I'm saying? So I'm saying that you can have opinions that, I, I don't mind keeping it within the realm of opinion as long as there's an acknowledgement that the, uh, someone like this is the Balatanya, for example, right? The author Rebbe wasn't just like a, he wasn't like a stomp dude, you know what I'm saying? I mean, even, even in the Lithish world, where, like, there's not the Indian of learning Chassidus or learning, uh, Panimia Tatar, or whatever you want to call it, Kabbalah. Um, there's still an acknowledgement that the, you know, the Balatanya also wrote the Shulchan Arav, and he was not just, uh, you know, Joe Schmo. He definitely, uh, he definitely is well regarded for his knowledge base. So I'm saying just to say that, just to say that, uh, he was an ordinary guy, I'm happy to say that, I'm happy to say that someone doesn't have to believe everything that Tanya says to be a Elifayid, or to say a, a kosher yid. But uh, the, 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 the disagreement I have is just to say that he was like, if, if I wrote something or you wrote something, I think that's uh, I think that's where I might disagree with you. Right. Well, because you hold them in such high regard, you know. But if someone just as knowledgeable as the Balatanya was, if they wrote something that contradicted everything the Balatanya wrote, well, you would still think he's great, and I mean, he's clearly greater than you and I. But it's still just opinion. Right. I mean, like, you don't. That's, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying something. that. I, uh-huh. Yeah. I'm saying that. I'm saying we have such an example, right? Rechaim Velazhner, right? Rechaim Velazhner was the Nefesh Chaim, and uh, there are some contradictions between the Nefesh Chaim and the Tanya. But I, I don't say that Rechaim Velazhner wasn't uh, uh, a, a great person, a tzaddik, whatever you want to say, just because he had some chiluk he had some differences of ashkafa. Uh, whatever it might be, with uh, with Alter Rebbe, I don't, I don't make, I don't make it like he was a Gornish, he was a nothing, he was obviously no right. But they could both be great. I mean, they can't both be right, uh, but they could both be great. And at the end of the day, we'll find out who's right after we die, if anything. Hey, look, the person who created this big rift uh, between mystics and rationalists was essentially the Rambam. I mean, the Rambam started saying, if you believe this and that. So you lose your halak and Rambam. I don't think anyone ever said that before, and this is why the Rivin and a lot of people would attack the Rambam, saying like, "Who are you to say this when Rabbi Brigham and you believed it?" Yeah, and the famous, famous Rivin. Yeah, this is what I see in the Jewish world today as well. I mean, I see this guy uh, Rabbi Mizrahi and and Yaron Ruven attacking the like, Chabadniks when they essentially believe, you know, in terms because they're saying like, "Oh, I mean, for someone to say that God needs them in any way is the limitation of God." Okay, yes. I see them adhering to that principle of the Rambam, but how about every other Kabbalistic principle that they toss out the window? So they use the Rambam in order to fuel their hatred, right? But at the same time, they do the same thing. So this is why I've been very open towards Messianics and very open towards, you know, Hasidim, because at the end of the day, Judaism is able to be more colorful than just rational Judaism. So we can walk and chew gum, 
we could know that this is the building blocks of Judaism. But, I mean, life would be just so dry. I mean, even for my kids, I know there's no there's no chovat to dress up on Purim. You know, but if my kids want right. to dress up, I mean, I mean that's their favorite holiday. I'm not going to say, oh, because Chazal didn't do it, we're not going to do it. No, I mean, life is a little more complicated than that. But that, right. again, it opens me up to, to groups like Messianic Judaism in particular because there's a huge double standard. We tolerate it from groups that look more ethnically Jewish, but, I mean, hashkaftically, I mean, someone could believe in the New Testament and ultimately bring them closer to God and still acknowledge, no, what we know for a fact, what we believe you know, wholeheartedly is Torah from Sinai, and Torah Shabbat Peh, that's what makes you a yid. I mean, that's the Lubavitcher approach, actually. I don't think the average Lubavitcher believes that you have to kind of hold by everything the Balatanya holds. They're like, you have your rebbe and we have ours, but essentially what unites us is Torah Shabbat Peh and Torah Shabbat Peh. Yeah, I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. If someone would tell me that, like what Dr. Rav mentions in the beginning of the Tanya, of the opinion that, uh, that a Yiddish and Neshama and Neshama Kisar are, is the Shalit Lutami Mal Mamish, right? So, if you're going to tell me that uh, you don't agree, that you, you think you don't agree with that concept, you don't like it, whatever, I don't think that puts you out of the qual. You know what I'm saying? I don't think that's, right. I don't think that's Apikorsis or Kfira or Anything that's so uh, so radical that would mamish like put you outside of uh, claw you throw. So I'm saying that's an example I was I'm talking about. But you know I don't I don't feel like as long as there's the basis of like you mentioned Torah Shabbat Peh Torah Shabbat then I think we have what to to go with. But if we're but if we're going uh that but that's where that's kind of where when it comes to you mentioned uh, like uh, various Christian. Uh, Groups that are uh, like have a little bit of a Jewish flavor, like Messianic, whatever. The thing with that is that, and it is my opinion, is that the reason I would say that they're, I, I, the reason that I would say, well, first of all, I would, I, from what I understand, I think rove, rove of the people that of the Christian groups like that are not even halakhically Jewish anyway. Right? Right. Rove of them are like, uh, so that's number one. And number two is that I think embracing embracing Yushka, um, which we can we can talk about this, because Chazal were so so clear about about who that person really was and what he really was doing. I don't. Well, they weren't, by the way. I, I don't. Well, I mean, it, 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 talk about Yushka. Well, I mean, there's Gemara's where it talks about it, so Ratatas, right? And, uh, right, yeah, but that's uh, a debate if it's even him. I mean, they're saying that it's the Taman Muvchok of Rav Yeshua ben Prakia. It's not set in stone. I mean, mainly because we do... Well, for like, sure, for sure, I'm thinking... Yeah. For sure, in the vast majority of Yeshivas through the Doris, through the, through the ages, it was taught that was Yashka, right? That was the way it was taught. I mean, that was the way it was definitely understood. I know con- uh, in the contemporary world, it's not so... You know, polit- politically uh, correct to say things like that, but my, I, I can't imagine that of the main yeshivas that uh, you know this is in Europe and even by the Sardin, that anyone questioned that uh, that uh, the person that was being spoken about. But it doesn't really matter at any day because, like I say, it doesn't matter because we're we're talking about people that aren't even in the call anyways because they're not even halakhically Jewish anyways. So I'm right. saying that's why I think that's the chiluk, right? The chiluk is if, if, you're if they were. Like, I mean, if they were. I mean, that's the question. If they were, if they were Jewish. It's, it's, so I don't it's interesting interesting mean interesting anything but Kabbalistic form of Judaism, because I could basically justify every idea with the exception that that they were less tolerant in certain areas. For example, like I mentioned, that the Lubavitcher will still tolerate you as a yid even though you don't believe in the Tanya, but uh, like a Christian will believe that you can't please God at all, like unless you accept their hushkaf completely. Right. That's the only disagreement. But in terms of the yeah, smut and a goof, a sadic dying for your sins, all these concepts do exist in the more nister areas of uh, like a Yiddishkeit. So, I mean, it's not completely... Well, foreign. not nister. I mean, sad, Nisa Sadiq and Michal Peretz is a, is a Gemara in Lloyd Patton, I think, right? Or, I mean, it's, a, it's, it's Hazal that said that. It's not like no, right. but, uh, the Indian, no, but even within so the Kral, like I mean, they had a form of mysticism within them also. I mean, Merkava. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah, not right, so right, right, Merkava. I mean, it's yeah. Really agotic. I mean, it's not. Uh, no, I'm saying that it's not like the Shurish. It's not like the source of all that is just like Mister or Soda or whatever. It's also 
very, very, it's very it's rooted in Chazal as well, such ideas. But I'm saying that, that, uh, well, the, the only, the only, the only point I'm trying to make is that, that, uh, you're right. Okay, maybe, maybe, maybe the Chorah, you're right. I mean, seemingly you might be right to say that, to say that if they were halakhically Jewish, and they, th- let's, let's exclude Yashka for a second. Let's say they believe any particular, uh, individual is Mashiach, um, yeah, I, I don't know if that, like I said, I don't think that puts you out of the claw either. So I think for Fabad it does. I mean, that was, you'd have to say, if you're going to be intellectually consistent, you'd have to say then the Mashiach system are also outside of the claw, right? Which I don't think they are. Right, hold on, hold on. It's an interesting point you mentioned of Chazal talking about Torah Rotachat and all this stuff. Is that enough to guide us hashkafically in a certain area? Because, I mean, I'm really convinced that Chazal really don't set hashkafa. Yes, they do. I mean, they mention it, but the simple fact that everyone sort of disagrees on that and there isn't a final din on it means that there isn't a monopoly on it. You know, for example, mm-hmm. I just made a bunch of videos with like Kutim, with like Samaritans in Israel. And it's interesting in the Mishnah, it seems like it talks about them like Jews, but come Talmud Bavli, it's already there like Kagoy. It seems that Hashkafically assuming, I mean, but it's true. I mean, I think maybe 200 years ago, like uh, in less academic circles, people weren't making it. Dist- they weren't distinguishing the Yeshua Nel tree that appears in the Talmud today with with a different guy. Even though, I mean, historically we know that the Beis Hanagadol didn't have the power to put people to death in the time of Jesus. It, yeah. It's hard. Like Chazal say that they killed the Yeshua Nel tree like seven different ways. Five, no, five or seven different ways uh, that the Beis Hanagadol actually put him to death. So, but anyways, I mean, that's not here or there, but, I mean, the bigger question is, can Chazal guide us hashkafically on, from an authoritative perspective, on what's kosher and what's not, when they were limited to just, like, voting things into existence in the, in a court setting? Well, I would say, I would say that, uh, um, you, you're talking about as far as, is it within the Pasuk, right, in the Pasuk, and they talk about having a basin, right? If it's in the, if, if they have the power to, to say what you can believe, what you can't believe, right? Uh, right, right. I mean, it seems that unless it's tied to an actual practice, like, uh, I don't know, like Hilchus of Odezora, it says that this is the way a Pesel is worshipped. Now, if you do that, then you're over on that Avera, according to right. the law. But to say that, to believe that someone's the Messiah, or, I mean, for sure they didn't limit... Uh, people believing that a man could be like an atzmut and a goof. They had primitive ideas. So all, we're all six-day creationists, which I am also, right? But compare that to like most Jews nowadays that adopted like a Gerald Schroeder billion of years of creation and, you know, right. in some way. Well, this is one thing I did want to respond to because you said that regarding the sefirot, there's something I said about God having reproductive organs, that that wasn't to be taken literally. I believe that the people who initially wrote it did take it literally, and then later on, people who wrote about it said, no, you can't, because they had to balance the Rambam and, and the Rasag and a lot of things into it. But it wow. seems that the initial guys actually did believe it, right? I mean, Chazal believed that God had a body, right, or a shape. I mean, he put on tefillin. I mean, they believed it. Perhaps later on, the Roshonim sort of explained it away, which makes me feel that it's not wrong to believe it, and you're not judged by what you believe, you're judged by what you do, right? And this is... Um, I, 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 that, that, yeah. That's like a more of an academic, like, kind of thing. What did the the authors of the early, you know, sign of uh, Sot, of Phineas, or White, of, of Kabbalah, what did they uh, believe, as far as, as far as any of what's called the Slapshift shows, I mean, of, like, like uh which is like a very complicated term, but it just basically means like uh or like like or in so being like encapsulated or encompassed by a vessel. If it goes on you know, what you mentioned for atmos, right? If it goes on atmos or if it goes on or whatever, it's a whole it's a whole figure that. Um I mean I am not I'm I'm not I'm definitely not uh No, you're qualified. I mean now, we can read it how it appears. I mean, for sure, the Arizal believed what he wrote, and the Radak believed what he wrote, 
and and the Arizo believed in Sim Sum like he actually believed that Mamish God contracted himself, which is fine, but it's not fine if like if you're a student of the Rambam, right, or like a like a full student of the Rambam, because you feel like well this I mean the Rambam laid down I mean he's the most influential uh, rabbi that feel that I mean that people feel that they have to kind of pay lip service to every time they give a shiur, right? They're like oh yeah we believe I'm not, I'm not we can't believe in it yeah. I, I'm not so sure that Ariza believed that Simpson was in was in the divine essence and Hotsmus. I think the at least the, the, the understanding of it, at least the way that it's you know taught, is that it was in the or not in the Hotsmus, right? It was in like Hashem's gilo in the way that he like projects and relates to creation, not in him himself. And that's definitely that's for sure the way the Radak and the the, uh, the that's, I think it's, it's even before from the Radak. That, that yeah, either way, I mean, according to the Rambam, it's still a limitation. I mean, to split up God as as a portion that's light and a portion that's just spiritual, that's still a limitation, according to the Rambam. But in other words, we cannot please the Rambam and espouse Kabbalistic ideas as fundamentally true. But we have to pick. I'm saying that we don't have to pick. I mean, you could just say the Rambam's just opinion, which he is also, but people don't like being unpopular. And going against the Rambam is one thing that makes people unpopular. Right. Well, that, that's but that, that, that's that's another thing. I think that's the the the, the way that it's usually explained. That's why I said that the whole point of the email was just to say that if you're the, it's just that I felt that uh, when when you speak about these like concepts, that you should speak about the concepts in a way that I mean, not that you should. I mean, I, I just felt that uh, there was some misrepresentation in the sense that I mean, I think you, you're you're educated enough to know that the vast majority. I mean, not just that majority, pretty much everyone who's probabilistically inclined doesn't believe like Simpson was in was in God himself or that the spirits are God himself. That's right. That kind of thing. I mean, I'm, right. I so agree with you. you. I think it's, I agree. It's, right. So it'd be good to for, it'd be good for like make for clarification sake, so that you know the people that. Uh, oh no, but I'm not attacking them. For it. You. I'm just saying that it's not in line with the Rama preaches. Right. You know, so in other words, no, it's hard to say that we go fully by the Rambam, but that we believe in Sim Sum. So people try to, you know, like enjoy both worlds. You can't enjoy both worlds. You have to either pick a side or say that everyone is just espousing their opinion. But in that case, that would open us up to um, other groups that aren't so desirable in the Jewish world, like essentially like Messianics and stuff like that, who also espouse their opinions that, you know, I mean, perhaps they can't even articulate what they believe fully. I mean, they'll say the Trinity, but the, it, it, it's like the mystery of the Trinity. But what they're convinced of is that there's a God, and that God wants us to keep his commandments to some extent. And that's really what we should all sort of get along under. Yeah. Right, right. That, but, but that's, but that's what I'm saying is that that's the chiluk. The chiluk is that, that uh, by Mkubalim, the idea of like stuff like uh, parts and spirits and all this stuff is would not be within God himself or his Christianity the separation of the three parts is in God Himself, right? That's uh that's, oh, that's wait, wait, a wait, big difference. So you're saying with what people believe in nowadays versus what the authors originally uh intended by the simple fact that the average Christian can't even articulate fully what he believes. And even if he does, I don't think it makes it heretical. But to say that only because we have modernized the notion of the Sephirot, not to believe that God actually has a penis or this and that, right, that that makes it any better. I'm not attacking the Sephirot. I'm attacking the hypocrisy. That assuming that if you did take it seriously, I mean, suddenly that we have text that if we took it seriously, that we'd be heretics. It should make us not completely throw away that, but open us up to other groups that kind of do the same thing, right? And our job is to remind them, like what you're doing, don't take it seriously. You know, this could be understood in the same way we could balance out the Rambam with this, not fully because the Rambam wouldn't even tolerate you thinking like that. But at the same time, I don't think the average Christian is even as religiously sophisticated as the average Jew to really explain what he believes. Because yeah, it's three and one, right? So three and one is not three separate. I mean, it's similar to the Sephirot. They're emanations. For sure, they're not physical emanations. Well, once you start describing reproductive organs, you're already talking about a shape. It's for sure right. problematic, according to the Rambam, right? It's not problematic to me because I think the world's more, there's more important things in life to argue about silly things like this, like the complexity of God. We should stop trying to dissect God. And for those who want to, they have to tolerate people who disagree. I mean, I don't debate Kabbalists and I don't I mean, debate Christians anymore. What I try to do right. is get them to be Torah observant or to know the building blocks of our religion. That's it. Right. But I'm saying that, that my, 
it could be I'm not right, but I, the, the, the way I understood how they teach, uh, how they understand their religion is that the, the parts of three are like literally in God himself. That's the way I saw it. Okay. Maybe you think it's not that way. Well, but that, that, that is, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not commenting on whether or not, uh, if a person didn't, who believes such a thing would go in the mikvah for Garrus, if it would be hollow or not, if that would work. I'm not commenting on that. I'm just, I'm just saying that, uh, it is, it is a difference in, regarding to what, whatever the authors of the, of the early text of, of, uh, so and Communion's believes, that's uh I think it's already it's already like it's already like pontification in some way. Because like, right. it's not, they weren't they weren't just those, those texts themselves are not they're not super clear text. Even the even the even the Zoyar itself yeah, is no, not, not very clear. I mean huh? the New Testament only has twenty seven books. There's a lot more Kabbalistic texts. In other words, I view the twenty seven books of the New Testament less problematic than all the Kabbalistic books out there that talk about the Zayd Anpin, the Partufim, the Atsilut, that's more problematic. In other words, it could lead you to more heresies than just having a debate if God is one or three and one. In other words, we nitpick with Messianics, but for some reason we tolerate a lot of things within Judaism that is a lot more problematic. Even the notion of Shabtai Si, right? Shabtai Si, what made him go off? Basically, the teachings of the Arizal, the idea of, like, of the Netzitzot is that you actually have to do evil to recover some of the sparks that fell away. Evil. Now, I'm not saying the average person takes that literally, but he did. And the Arizal believed it, you know, like, other than you know, Rabbi Natan of Gaza wouldn't have endorsed it. So it shows that, eh, that we should work together with people that we disagree very little on. And I think that there's, there's more problems in Kabbalist literature than in the New Testament. I don't know if there's. I, I I agree on one sense. I agree in the sense that a person who reads the the Sifrei Kabbalah and uh, even Chassidus, whatever, uh, without uh, without uh, you know, just effectively reads it without proper hadracha, can come to some wacky conclusions. But I think like the ideas I were, that that we like spoke about in the email and the things that I didn't speak about now. You know, this is pretty early understandings of the Zodar and the Kisiariza. It's not just uh, out of thin air I'm bringing these like these, these explanations just to like kind of make, make the Rambam shim with Kabbalah. It's, this is the this is the way that you know the, even even in the even the even in the the the, the Ramban the Ramban very early uh, Kabbalah was already speaking about ideas like I was speaking about like the idea of uh, the difference between or and self and and uh, the, yeah, but uh, I'm from an authoritative perspective. I mean, everyone had a huh? different understanding. There is no monolithic understanding on any of these things. Right? I mean, some rabbis yeah. feel like they should comment on it because they don't want people to take it literally in this and that, which shows that, you know, it's just your opinion, man. It's, I mean, it's their opinion, and it's fine. But I don't want to make it sound like I'm just defending my shanics. I'm just trying to keep this consistent, that if we're going to tolerate no, To go back to the rational thing, I think that there's many people who become so rational that they rationalize their way out of Judaism, right? And yeah. Yeah. this is why I always feel that we're limited in our rationale when it comes to Judaism. I mean, there's still like a an aspect of faith, and we have to make this livable. And honestly, I mean, I know that David Rahim crowd doesn't like. I thought you guys because, were like. I thought you guys were like big bros. I like he was like, no, no, I mean, I interviewed the guy, but then I mean, he said no to a different interview. Wait. We have a different style, and I get it. I mean, um, but the you, rationalists you, you never got along with me. I wanted to but, tell you, since we spoke like three years ago, you've become like Mamish. you become the sniper. <laughs> you've become like the, 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 the uh, what's it called? The, I don't know how to the terminology is, but the spotlight was like all these guys like Yaron Ruvain and, and uh, Yossi Mizrahi was Mamish on you for like a few months. Yeah, no. <laughs> hey, but how do you feel about that? It was, um, I don't want to get into Shinhara, but, uh, I, uh, I, uh, I I'll say, say some, uh, yeah, but okay, whatever. I'll, I'll say something in, something positive first. I definitely <laughs> appreciate Yossi Mizrahi and Yaron Ruvain. I think they're devolving great for like Sardi Balichuva. I think they're like perfect for people like that. That they like to kind of like Gehinnom and, huh? Bukharian. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. 
Yeah, Bukharians, uh, Bukharians, stuff like that. Yeah, they're, they're very good for that, for th- that Kalik and Kalisro. I think they probably do a lot of good. But, uh, for more sophisticated, uh, Yudin, I think they just kind of, I think, and I, I mean this in, in, in like you said, the toilet. I, I think that a person can look at some of their sure and just think it's ridiculous. Right? Right. And, and then I think that's like, the majority of West, more Western kind of people, I don't think that uh, I don't think that that's their cup of tea, so to speak. But um, that's more or less my my feeling uh, about them. I don't I don't know them personally. Uh, I'm sure personally, I, I heard. Yeah, when I was in Yeshiva, I'll tell you the truth. I had some friends that were were, were going to Yosef Mizrahi for Shabbos and and things like that. And he said he was really, actually a very nice person. Just like when he speaks, he, I guess he like kind of puts on more of the... No, I understand. The, like, I, understand. Him, I know that you're on Reuven personally. He lives like a few blocks from my house. And, and, and that's, I, that's, 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 that, that's really funny, actually. Yeah, you, no, know, you see him like shopping, you like walking twice, twice, the in person. No, I mean, I sat down and I talked to him, but this was probably like six or no, like eight years ago. And he was different. Oh. And he was like, "Oh, I'm a big fan of your videos and this and that." And then I, I mean, he sort of firmed out. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I don't. I, it's just a lot of hatred coming from their ends. Um, but I was curious. Well, it looks like it. I mean, it seems like it kind of stopped, right? Well, I mean, it didn't stop, but he just stopped naming names. You know, but the hatred is still there. I mean, he still talks bad about people, but he won't tell you unless it's Manus Friedman. You know, Manus Friedman for some reason drives him up the wall. Right? Um, yeah, I, I, that's yeah. they're amateurs. Mm-hmm. I mean, I got, I have Keepa's older yeah. than I mean, he's been religious. <laughs> it's, um, it, it, it's true, you know. Yeah. Fine. No, but you'll come yeah, around. Well, well, you'll come around. Romanus, Romanus is uh, first of all, he's a Tamachacham. He's a Tzaddik. He's a uh, he's a uh, he's you know. I I I I don't think there's uh, much comparison. Yeah. You know? Okay. If we're comparing like. The three of them, I would imagine that uh, if we put them on a scale of weights, I mean, the Mount Friedman is, uh, he's, 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 uh, he's a special he is, you know, so. It's, you know, I was talking to a friend of mine, I, how a debate by them would go, you know, I mean, because Manus Friedman is like a real rabbi, you know what I mean? I mean, I'm, I mean, consider yeah, yeah. me a nobody, right, Mizrahi's a nobody, this and that, you know, but the way these nobodies typically debate is that, because they're trying to get a debate together. I mean, there's some Chabonics that are trying to get them together, but it'll be a joke because I already see Manish Friedman just hitting him with Bryce's and Hazal and all this guy's going to quote is the Benish guy. Right. Right. <laughs> you know, right. It's just such a joke. You know, I mean, you have like a real Torah scholar. I mean, to the point that he's such a scholar that he's able to improvise and bring nuance to it. You know, but when you're about Shiva, like all you know is just the din, you know, and it's not even the din, right. it's the din according to the Rambam. Right. You know, and it just seems right. like so not colorful and, and, and sophisticated. <laughs> But no, right. it's said. almost like it's almost. I, I was wanting to tell you something. I thought it was an interesting thing about it. It's almost like the Bruvain and uh, and the Mizrahi that they almost like judge uh, or Friedman with like the measuring stick of a rationalist, even though they themselves. That's exactly are, like, what I said. More, right. They quote the Rambam oh, when it's convenient this, yeah. for them. Yeah, but they believe the exact same thing. I mean, don't forget, like we'll put Rabbi Mizrahi on the map. You know, saying that if you broke Shabbos in this life, well, that you'll be a Gilgal of of like an invalid in the next life, and you know, and yeah. also like it's hard to believe in this if you don't. And I think that God needs you to play a part in it to to in some way repair the world, right? It it, it will be so easy, you know, for yeah. Brother Manish Friedman to wipe the floor with them just because they're not consistent. You know, they're not consistent. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. But I just it, yeah, that's it, it, it's interesting how that works because. I always wonder because it doesn't seem like if they would sit together, it doesn't seem like like Bashkosa. There's so much, so much difference between the three of them. You're saying, I mean, in a lot of ways, it seems like, like I can't, I can't imagine that uh, that uh, either one of them is like negative anything that's said in Chassidus Chabad or uh, anything like that. It just seems like it's more like a. Actually, I have, I don't really actually understand the actual the machlekes that's between them. I really don't. I don't really understand it. Yeah. I don't understand yeah. it. No, it's just, I mean, popularity. I mean, they're shooting at a high target. I mean, just to say, like, look, you know, I'm taking shots at them. 
Right. I mean, I would love right. to debate Rabbi Mizrahi, and I would love to debate Rabbi. I mean, heck, they wouldn't even call me Rabbi Asher. I'll call, I mean, I'll call a woman Rabbi Rabbi. I don't care. I mean, it's I mean, it's what you know. I mean, it's not the title in front of you. I mean, it's not the pronoun. Yeah. Well, uh, especially here in Eric Israel, Eric Israel, like yeah. You know, I mean, nobody gets me you know, you know? Yeah. I mean, you don't need to speak unless you're looking for a job in America. No, but I challenge yeah, Rabbi that's Mizrahi. Yeah, that's And you're wrong, moving, and they said no. By the way. I mean, because they know better. They know that I'm logical, if anything, you know, and I'll show how they're they're kind of uh, outmatched. Either they have to do yeah, some other day. I'm pretty sure they do. It's it's not hard to get smicha, man. I mean, like, if, I mean, any no, rabbi. I know it's not. I know it's not. You know, so there was a rabbi. There was a rabbi in who was just nifter. What's his name? Uh, his oh, uh, Goldberg. Right, Nehemiah Goldberg. He was the uh, basin of the Eight Hundred. Yeah, he was. Yeah. Yeah, he was giving everybody. Like, I'm saying, he's practically he's practically handing those things out. Right. I mean, he, I, he, he didn't. Even, I had a friend who took a test. By the way. His test. Uh, uh, yeah. You were allowed to take home. <laughs> yes, yeah, I had a friend who did it home, with right? a buddy of his. It's like, come on, it's like. No, but you need no, some sort of cool. a scumma. I mean, you just can't. All the light hurts. There was a reform rabbi who went and got smicha from him or something, you know. But supposedly, I mean, he doesn't just give it to anyone. I mean. Like you have to come recommend right. it. 